my name is Natalie Bungay and I'm from the British Pest Control Association. Today we're going to be talking about squirrels. We've all seen squirrels out and about in the park and the countryside, but what happens when they get into your property and your home? They can cause some problems. So I think it'd be great today to have a look at squirrels, what problems they can cause and how we can deal with them. UK we have two species of squirrels. We've got our native red squirrel and then we've also got an invasive species, the grey squirrel. It's really important to remember that the red squirrel is protected so they're absolutely to be left alone. So let's focus a bit on the grey squirrel. I mentioned it's an invasive species, it's actually not native to this country and it is in prolific numbers. We all like seeing squirrels out and about in the parks and countryside. However, the problem with grey squirrels is that they can cause a variety of problems for us. One of those problems is that they can get into our properties and cause a lot of damage. A grey squirrel is actually a rodent by nature, so they have these strong incisor teeth of which they need to gnaw regularly. So this can cause a lot of damage in our properties when they're trying to gain access. The other problem is also that they strip bark from certain trees and cause a lot of damage and in most circumstances those trees will actually die as well so the forests and woodlands around us we're trying to protect so it's really important that we consider that when we're talking about grey squirrels. And the, the last um, issue with them is that the red squirrels are quite susceptible to something called squirrel pox. And the grey squirrel is a brilliant carrier of the squirrel pox, but they're not actually affected by it. So when you've got a population of grey and red squirrels together, those red squirrels are going to suffer and the grey ones will take over. Grey squirrels are active most of the year round. and They normally have two broods per year as well, but we're possibly going to notice them more when they start causing us a problem. So maybe coming into our properties through the roof line, they might have taken advantage of a hole that might already be there within your soffit boards or under your tiles. But sometimes they can create that hole to gain access to your property. And that's to really get shelter and warmth ready for the colder weather in the autumn and winter months. When grey squirrels enter a building, this is probably the time when you need to consider controlling them. And the reason we need to do that is because they cause a bit of damage trying to get access to the building. They may chew through soffit boards or even lift tiles up to get access. And then once they're in, they might rip up a bit of insulation, cause a bit of a mess and damage, and possibly even chew through wires that you might have up there in your cavities or your attic space. The other issue that they could cause is if one was to fall into your water tank, they're then going to contaminate it. And their droppings that they leave behind, which can be quite a lot in one space, will also cause a contamination risk. Once grey squirrels have got into a building and accessed a cavity or an attic space, it's very unlikely that they're going to go on their own. And this is because they've got a great environment for breeding and being safe. All they need to do is exit the attic every now and then just to search for a bit of food to bring it back to feed their young and themselves. The nature of grey squirrels can be quite inquisitive and quite destructive sometimes and this natural behaviour can cause a lot of noise, especially if they're in your attic or cavities within a building. To prevent grey squirrels from getting into your building, the best thing to do is actually restrict their access. And if you think about where and how grey squirrels get into your building, they normally go up to the, the roof line, up where your soffits are or your tiles. So if you've got any overhanging trees, make sure they're cut back to stop that easy access. Maybe you've got some plants or ivy that's growing up the side of the house, which again is a particular area that squirrels would take advantage of and use to actually get access to those high areas of your property. Another way to prevent grey squirrels from causing you too much of a problem is considering their food source. So if you feed the birds and you put out bread or seeds, squirrels will be particularly interested in this. So if you can think about that bird table, if you can purchase one that's squirrel proof, that would be a great way to help prevent that access that that squirrel has to any food source on your property. 
You may see grey squirrels in your garden quite often, but if you start to hear particularly loud noises within the attic space, then you might need to consider that maybe those squirrels have got access and you could possibly have an infestation that needs dealing with. Once a grey squirrel infestation has established itself within a building, it can be really tricky to deal with it and there's a few reasons for that. One of the reasons is that there are no amateur use poisons available, only professional users can use them. Also there's a bit of legislation associated with the live capture of a grey squirrel. If this was to happen then you cannot legally release it into the wild. You have to dispatch that animal because it's an invasive species and not native to the UK. Another thing to consider when it comes to controlling grey squirrels is that we can use traps that kill them instantly and humanely. However it's really important to remember that the traditional rat traps or breakback traps that you can buy in many stores around the country are not authorised to be used on grey squirrels and it could actually cause them a fair bit of suffering. There are specific traps, spring traps, that are authorised legally for the use on grey squirrels and it's only a professional that will have the access and the information on those traps. We strongly advise that you do not attempt to treat squirrels yourself. If you were to call out a professional pest management company, the first thing that they would do is to survey your property. They'll talk to you a bit about what you've experienced and where you've seen the squirrels. And they're, they're really going to try and find where they've got in, because that's the most important thing. So if they can establish where they've got into your property, they can then advise how to proof that up afterwards and prevent it from happening again. They will also then decide on what treatment strategy they're going to approach this with. As like I said, it will vary between traps and possibly some poison if they think it's necessary. Once the pest professional has decided what they're going to do and implemented all of their actions, they'll give you a detailed report on exactly what they've done and then also give you an expectation for follow-up visits just so that they can see how their work is going and that the infestation is being controlled. To find a professional pest management company to deal with your squirrel infestation, you can use the BPCA Find a Pest Controller tool. All you need to do is enter your postcode and then you'll be presented with a list of professional pest management companies in your area and you can be sure that they're trained, trusted and audited by BPCA. For more information about squirrels, please visit bpca.org.uk forward slash squirrels. If you need a pest management company, then find a local member at bpca.org.uk forward slash find. Alternatively, you can call our 24-7 helpline on 01332 294 288.